one thing that's going to be useful when we're approximating things is knowing whether our approximation is accurate, which we'll talk later about the accuracy of some of these methods. That's, that's um, going to be later this semester, not, not in this intro unit. Um, but also whether our answer is going to be bigger or smaller than the actual value. We, we've kind of introduced ourselves to these ideas already. Um, I want to kind of formalize them and, and talk about exactly when our rectangles are going to be over approximations, when they're going to be under approximations, or when we don't know. Um, and so we're going to look at just RRAM and LRAM. We're not going to do midpoints. Uh, midpoints is a little bit trickier. Uh, actually a lot trickier to know if it's an over and under approximation um, because of the nature of midpoints. Um, so the key with the rectangular approximation methods is whether the function is increasing or decreasing. It doesn't matter if, uh, and, and right now you may say, well, of course it doesn't matter, but you may get them confused later when we start talking about trapezoids. It doesn't matter if it's concave up doesn't matter if it's concave down, doesn't matter if it's a mixture of concave up and concave down, all that matters is, is if it's increasing or decreasing. So if we're using uh, right rectangles and the function is increasing, then what's going to happen? Are we going to have an over approximation or under approximation? An over approximation. I know this is kind of a bad drawing here, but you get the idea. Um, so when the function is increasing, and we're using right rectangles, it's going to be an over-approximation. Now, on the other hand, if the function is decreasing, and we're using right rectangles, then it's going to be what? An under-approximation. An under and it's pretty easy to see this because um, the rectangles are entirely underneath the function here. They're entirely above the function here. Okay, So if the function is increasing and we're using right rectangles, it's going to be an over. If the function is decreasing and we're using right rectangles, it's going to be an under approximation. Now, with LRAM, it's going to be very similar. So when we're using left rectangles and the function's increasing, then what's going to happen there? Over or under? Under. So with LRAM, an increasing function is going to give us an under approximation, and a decreasing function is going to give us... What? An over approximation. All right, it's pretty easy to see from the picture. This is another one of those things that I don't just memorize. Okay, it's RM, it's increasing, so it's an over approximation. I just visualize it. You see an increasing function, you may even want to just sketch it out on your paper. Increasing function, you're using right rectangles, it's going to be an over approximation. Um, the tricky part is going to be when a function is changing between increasing and decreasing. If that's the case, are we going to know in the end whether it's going to be an over approximation or an under approximation? No. So if we have a function that is increasing and decreasing, so it's going back and forth, uh, we don't know. Okay, it might be a sine curve, it might be a fifth degree polynomial, whatever. Um, we're not going to know. Okay, but if we're dealing with a function that is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing on this interval, we're, we're going to be able to tell if it's an over approximation or under approximation. So one thing that I'm going to ask you to do is tell me, compute this, and then, um, and then if, if it's a function, I want you to tell me if it's an over approximation or under, under approximation. If it's a table of data, you could guess. Now you're not going to know for sure, but you can still guess. So if you see that in the table of data, all of the data points are increasing, then you could, you could make the assumption that it's an increasing function and that it's probably going to be an over approximation for RM and an under approximation for LRAM. Uh, we wouldn't know that for sure though, because even if all the data points are increasing, we've seen before, we could have some erratic points in between that it's not really an increasing function. Okay, but you can make a guess that it, it probably would be. Now, for trapezoids, does that help us? Are we going to run into the same type of rules? Let, let's look at a picture and see. Let's look what happens here with trapezoids and an increasing function. 
In this case, um, I'm going to make sure my lines are nice and straight, make sure we get this right here. Um, we're going to have a picture that looks like this. Um, and so our trapezoids are going to look like that. So is this going to be an over approximation or an under approximation? Over. Don't know. Okay, I would guess that it's an over, especially because I didn't draw this part very well. Um, I think that this part over is going to be bigger than this part under. But does the increasing part really tell me whether it's going to be an over or an under approximation? No. What is it about this curve that does? Let's, let's just look at this section right here between the, between the green lines there. That's an under approximation there, right? What is it about that curve that makes the trapezoid an under approximation? It's concave down, exactly. So for the trapezoids, we want to look at the concavity. Here it's concave down, so the trapezoid is going to be an under approximation because the curve is going to be going over the top of it. Here it's concave up, and so it's going to be an over approximation because the curve is going to be underneath it. So it doesn't matter if it's increasing or decreasing. All that matters is the concavity. So we, here we have an increasing function, but if we had a decreasing function, the same thing would be true. So I've got a decreasing function here, um, and on this interval here where it is concave down, it's going to be an under approximation. And on this interval here where it's concave up, it's going to be an over approximation. Okay, so where the rectangles um, use the increasing or decreasing uh, characteristic of a graph, the trapezoids are going to use the concavity of the graph. Now, right now, we'll just, we'll, we'll get concavity just by looking at a function. We can see that a function is concave up or concave down, generally. Um, there's a point in here where the concavity changes from concave up to concave down, and it's kind of hard to tell. Just within that circle, it almost looks like a pretty straight line. Um, and so we're actually going to do some, some calculus to figure out where it actually changes from concave up to concave down. Uh, we'll worry about that later. For now, we'll, we'll just visualize it, and we'll say, okay, that looks like it's concave down, so the trapezoid is going to be an under approximation, or vice versa.